This is the basic setup that we have for lab four, which deals with um, astigmatism. We can see that we have our light box over here. This is different than the one we've used before. This is called a uh, point option light box. Um, and you'll notice that we have an aperture stuck over here. We can vary the size of this aperture in the lab. It says to have this about two to three millimeters in size, if you can. And then following that, we have our big plus lens. You'll recall from the last lab that we used this as a collimating lens. In other words, we're taking the vergence that's coming from our point source over here um, and making it zero by the time it comes out of this lens. So that when it goes into our real lens that we're interested in, it has uh, zero vergence going into it. So this lens has got uh, an object at infinity, just like we did last time. This lab also has a new piece of equipment called a Ginelli clip. Um, yours might be labeled with a different name, but it's the same basic idea. It's got um, a little holder for three different lenses to go in back to back, so we can have a thin lens system. Uh, you'll notice that it's got a little bubble level. You may not be able to see that very well. But make sure that little bubble's in the center there when you've got it on the bench. And you just clamp it into the lens holder like so. And then when you're ready to use it, all you have to do is put your lens in right there for the first lens. That's my sphere lens. And this is my cylinder lens. I'm just going to put it in right behind it. So I've got two lenses now back to back, so they add together to form a thin lens system. So the whole point of this lab is to view what kind of images you get on the screen if you've got an astigmatic system like we have here. So this is a combo sphero cylinder setup. And I have a distant object for this lens, so I can pretty easily predict where my near and far lines are going to be. And if you look at the screen back behind my lens, um, I'm going to move that screen back and forth. What you can see is when the, the screen is pretty close to the lens, I've got an oval, a vertical oval on the screen in this case. When I move the screen a little farther away, I get to my near line. If I move the screen a little farther away still, I get to my circle of least confusion. And notice that is a circle like my object was but it's kind of a big blurry circle. Now if I move my, uh, my screen a little farther away, that begins to form an oval shape and eventually will form my uh, far line on the screen. So depending on where the screen is located within Sturm's conoid, I get different things on the screen. So there's no single image point that this lens creates, unlike a spherical lens does. So the whole point of this lab is to get you comfortable looking again at sphero cylinder uh, images and what kind of images we get in astigmatism and that is again analogous sort of what happens with the retina but although we're dealing with point object here we'll get to next week using extended objects instead. Now a couple things to be careful about with this lab. Um, it should be written in the handout pretty carefully for you to see but this gets extremely hot. The light bulb inside of here really heats this thing up um, so be very careful when you come and handle that box. Um, if you need to move it only move it by the end down here that's plastic and even then be kind of careful. Um, Turn it off and let it cool off completely before you disassemble your setup. Another thing to watch for is to make sure that your lenses are all about the same height. If the lenses are not about the same height above the optic axis and the um, point object over here by the aperture is also not exactly the same height, you get weird images on the screen and they kind of skew. So make sure everything is nice and level uh, when you're doing this lab. Other than that, it's pretty straightforward to do. You have some calculations to do ahead of time to try to predict where the marker locations are going to be for Sturm's conoid, the near line, the far line, and circle east confusion. And then you'll be able to view these uh, in lab to hopefully give you a better concrete sense of what's really going on with astigmatism.